Good morning, folks. Welcome back to National 5 Chemistry. Today, we're going to have a look at SQA pages 43 through to 47. That is the content of acids and bases. These are the learning outcomes I'd like to tackle today. pH scale, we're going to have a closer look at the weirdness that water is. We're going to have a look at an acid here, how to make an acid from scratch, and what the SQA wants you to know about the nature of acids. We're going to have a look at bases. There are four categories of base, and we'll have a look at the neutralization reactions between acids and bases. In the meantime, let's have a look at our first topic here. We said the pH scale. This is a method of measuring whether a substance is an acid, an alkali, or a neutral. The pH scale runs from zero, actually below zero, but that's advanced higher, up to 14, as far as we're concerned here. And zero to uh, six are all acids. You find the strongest acids down at 0, 1, 1, and 2. Don't really want to take a bath in these things here. Up here at 6 and 7, you find weaker acids. In fact, the surface of your skin is usually around about 5.5-ish, if I remember correctly. And we have alkalis here running from 8 all the way up to 14. Again, the furthest away from neutral is where you find your strongest acids and alkalis. And as you get closer down to here to neutral, they get weaker. Um, so up here is something like bleach and drain cleaner. Be extremely careful with these substances. And down here is saliva. In fact, just above seven. Handy for neutralizing the acid from the bacteria in your mouth. And that's about it. Let's move on to the second topic, which is a closer look at a glass of water. Here is my glass of water. And we, uh, hopefully in our mind, have nice water molecules pictured, don't we? If you remember all the way back, oxygen has got six outer electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is obviously not happy. So therefore, we can share some of these electrons in covalent bonds with hydrogen atoms. And we can create ourselves nice little water molecules where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So everybody's happy there. That is a covalent bond, isn't it? Well... A lot of the time, deep sigh there, a lot of the time in chemistry, we end up simplifying things and telling you the truth later on. It turns out life is not quite as clear cut as just covalent anionic. But let's not worry about that at the moment. There's a water molecule. What happens every so often is that this bond here actually breaks. And we end up making HO uh, and H. Now, this is neutral. Uh, this has got a negative charge, that is a hydroxide ion, and this has a positive charge to counterbalance it. So every so often, a water molecule splits up to forming a hydroxide ion and a hydrogen ion. Now, you notice I haven't made a mistake here. This is a reversible reaction, because shortly after they are formed, they tend to reform back into a water molecule again. And in fact, we're talking 99.99% of your glass of water is indeed covalent molecules. However, there is a small, small percentage of this. By the way, chemistry teachers don't show it to me. I know these percentages are not accurate. It's close enough for National 5. There's a very, very small percentage of ions floating around in my glass of water. That is why even pure water does actually conduct electricity to a very, very slight extent. Unlike, for example, a glass of octane, otherwise known as a glass of petrol. It is a complete insulator because it's all covalent. Go and look at my molecule, go and look at my covalent versus ionic video for more details. But I just thought I'd let you into this little picture. Why am I telling you this? Well, you'll see why in the very near future. Just before we leave this behind, by the way, though, can I note the fact that there is one hydroxide for every one hydrogen ion? So that means in my glass of water, there will be equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions floating around the place. That will become important when we have a look uh, at the nature of acids and alkalis in just a minute. Uh, let me check and see if there's anything else that I have not covered. Nope, all good. Let's move on to acids. So if I wanted to make myself a jar of acid from scratch, how would I do it? The answer is relatively straightforward, actually. You get a non-metal. You then burn the non-metal, so we combine it with oxygen, you make a non-metal oxide. Then you take that non-metal oxide and you see if it will dissolve in water. And if it does, then you've made yourself an acid. So in other words, acids are made from soluble, 
non-metal oxides. This is all a bit abstract. Let me see if I can give you an example. So, for example, if we took um, sulfur here, sulfur will quite happily burn, unfortunately, to make a pretty nasty gas called sulfur dioxide. If you were to take that sulfur dioxide gas, capture it and dump it into water, you will actually make an acid. It's not quite sulfuric acid. It's very close to it. Um, but nevertheless, you still make yourself an acid solution from soluble non-metal oxides. There are examples of that. For example, silicon can indeed burn, and you can make silicon dioxide, otherwise known as sand. But that, of course, does not dissolve in water, which is nice. Otherwise, all your beaches would dissolve. Uh, and therefore, we can actually produce an acid solution from all non-metal oxides. It's just soluble ones. On a very similar topic you're also expected to know how to make yourself an alkali solution. And I'm hoping that perhaps you might be able to work it out. If non-metals, if they dissolve, make acids, then metal oxides, if they dissolve, they will end up making alkali solutions. There is a second way to make an alkali solution, but it's exclusive to group one metals. Because they're called the alkali metals, the clues in the name, you can actually take a group one metal. You can drop it straight into water uh, from a distance because it tends to go bang, or at least, at the very least, a violent fizz. And you will actually make an alkali and a hydrogen gas. So you can do it with group one metals like sodium, tons of YouTubes on that. Uh, and you can actually make the alkali directly and you make hydrogen gas, or you can take the metal oxide. An example of that would be magnesium oxide. It does actually dissolve a little bit in water, and you will end up making an alkali. You notice I've chickened out here and just said alkali and acid. I haven't actually told you what they are yet. Don't worry. That's in my uh, section four uh, on category and basis. I think what we'll do first, though, is we'll look back at acids in a little bit more detail, uh, and we'll see some examples of some standard acids. Now, here is one way of looking at an acid. Acids release hydrogen ions into the water when they dissolve. That is one definition of an acid. And I've got some examples of some acids here before we go any further. Hydrochloric acid. Frequently come across, nice and simple actually, just literally hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen valency 1, chlorine valency 1, that's the formula. These other acids we come across, there's another one down here. Don't come across this one very often. Um, these are all made using more complex ions. The negative ion here is more complex ion. Nitrate is one minus ion. Go and look these up in your data book. It tells, and also remember that the valency of this ion here is the same as the charge. So hydrogen valency one, nitrate valency one, not the three. So just HNO3, that is called nitric acid. And if you remember back the last slide, I said that we make acids by burning non-metals. So you can see that we started with nitrogen to make nitric acid. Sulfuric acid, hydrogen valency one. Sulfate has got a two minus charge, so that's valency two. So we need two of these. So that is sulfuric acid. And I'm an old fart, so I'm going to continue to spell it with a pH. And there's nobody can stop me. Although it's supposed to be an F nowadays, apparently. Um, so this is an unusual one. This one's actually the, the part of the flavouring is said in Coca-Cola. Phosphoric acid, it's called. That's actually what does the most damage to your teeth. Phosphoric acid. Uh, H valency 1, PO4 is a 3 minus ion. Really unusual, the phosphate ion, so H3, PO4. But these are the big three that you'll be dealing with in the lab, folks. Common acids. You don't have to memorize these. You could build up the formulas every time, but if you can remember them, life's going to be a lot easier for you. And their names. Uh, now let's have a look at what this means. Acids release hydrogen ions into the water. Well, we said just a couple of slides back that water is actually a mixture of molecules. I've lost my water slides, excuse me. So we said that water is actually mostly covalent with a, a few of these ions floating around. Now, if you imagine what's going to happen if you drop a little, say, hydrochloric acid into that, I've said here that hydrogen ions, sorry, acids release hydrogen ions into the water. They are, of course, going to also release chloride ions into the water um, because 
that's the counter eye to that, but we don't care about that too much. What we do care about is we're no longer going to have the same, the balance. I said here you had one of these for every one of these. Now, that is actually SQA's definition of a neutral solution. A solution is neutral if the concentration of the hydroxide ions is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ions. That causes a neutral solution, which we can measure as having a pH of 7. But that's the true reason for something actually being neutral. These are perfectly balanced. Now, because I've put some hydrochloric acid into here, we have considerably more of the hydrogens than we have the hydroxide. It's like a seesaw. We've now tilted in the neutral position. The seesaw is perfectly balanced, where we have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. In the case of an acid solution, we now have many more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. So the seesaw goes dunk down onto that side. But please note, you still do have both the ions in the solution. It's just there's a heck of a lot more of these than there is of these. That is a famous SQA trick in multiple choice questions. Which of the following is true about acids? A, they have only hydrogen ions. B, they have only hydroxide ions. C, they have more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. Or D, they have more hydroxides than hydrogen ions. And the answer is C, of course. There are still both of them. So people see acids and they fixate on just hydrogen ions, but don't forget there is a little um, a hydroxide ion in the solution. Where am I going to go next? Um, I think we're going to have a look at bases now. Okay, there are four categories of base. First of all, what is a base? Hey, A base is a substance which will neutralize an acid and make a salt in the process. So they neutralize acids to make salts. What is a salt? We'll come back to that. Don't worry. Quick version, basically a salt is just an ionic compound. That's all. Four categories of base here. Metal oxide, sorry, metal hydroxide, metal oxide, metal carbonates, and ammonia. I've written ammonia in green simply because, as you can see, it's very different to this setup here. These are all metal compounds and this is not. I've got some examples, some classic examples down the side here, guys. You need to know all these four categories of base. You need to be able to recognize them. In multiple choice questions in particular, they often ask which one of these substances would be able to neutralize an acid. You're looking for one of these categories. Um, you might be confused as to what the whole story is with an alkali then. So what's an alkali? And a simple version basically is an alkali is a soluble base. And these ones here, metal hydroxides in particular, these are very often dissolved. That's your classic alkali solution. So an alkali is a type of base. In the same way as Ford is a type of car, for example. So bases covers everything here, and an alkali is this particular type, usually metal hydroxide. Okay, folks, neutralizations. There are four, because there are four bases, there are four possibilities to neutralize acids, because that's what bases do, remember? We can have an acid and a metal hydroxide, and it forms a salt and water. I'll come back with some exact examples to let you know what I'm talking about in the next slide. We can have an acid and a metal oxide, which is, well, okay, makes exactly the same two things. Fair enough. Something that's easy in chemistry for a change. Acid plus metal carbonate makes a salt and water and carbon dioxide gas. So this is a nice fizzy one. And that, of course, comes from the fact that there is carbon and oxygen in this ion here. Whereas this ion is just oxygen and this is just hydrogen and oxygen. I'm hoping you might be able to see where this water is coming from, by the way. But I'll show you in the next slide. And lastly, acid and ammonia makes, again, a salt. Because that's what bases do. They make salts. In this case, it makes only an ammonium salt. You will see what I mean when I come back to that. These things, these things are still produced in the thousands of tons per second across our planet. Um, because they make great fertilizers. I can't quite remember if I've actually made a fertilizers video. If I haven't, I will catch up on that. Let's have a look at some actual examples of each of these four now. Okay, we have our four neutralizations here. These are proper examples of what's going on here, guys. So nitric acid plus sodium hydroxide. 
Let's see if my color coding is going to work for me. What do these four make? Well, if you remember that this is a hydrogen ion, this is a nitrate ion, this is a sodium ion, these are all ionic. You can perhaps start to see what might be going on here. The sodium ion will uh, combine with the nitrate ion here and make us, can we get the color coding correct? Sodium nitrate. Now valency one, valency one, so we're done. Again, remember, valency is the same as the charge on these ions. Go and look it up in your data book. Uh, what's left over? Hydrogen and a hydroxide. Oh, that's handy because that is going to make water. That's where the water comes from. Maybe I should have done that in green. Sorry, my apologies, folks. This is what happens when I try and outthink myself. It's never a good idea. Uh, what's going on here? Well... And the ion charge is on here, 2 plus, 2 minus. Again, perhaps you're going to see that the sodium, sorry, the salt is going to be made from magnesium and chlorine. So we're going to make magnesium chloride. That's our salt. Remember I told you earlier on, what was a salt? And I said, it's just an ionic compound. Magnesium 2 valency, chlorine 1 valency. So that is our formula. And also this and this are going to join up to form water again. Don't shout at me. By the way, the cleverer of amongst you will say, but there's not enough of these around. That is true. But that would be entirely fixed by balancing this equation. Because if we actually balance that equation, you'll see now there are two hydrogen ions for every one oxide ion, and you can still make your water. And that fixes the chlorines as well. Isn't chemistry excellent? Let's have a look at this one here. I'm hoping you can maybe... Uh, pause the screen and tell me what salt we're going to make on this one. Sodium from here, which is a one plus charge, of course. There just happen to be two of them. And the hydrogen ions, which still have a one plus charge, we're going to make, uh, sorry, and the sulfates, which have a two minus. So we're going to make sodium sulfate here, guys. Uh, valency one, valency two. So that's the proper formula there. And, of course, we're going to make water. To tell you that on another sheet. And we're going to have a spare carbon dioxide left over. So that's where that comes from there. This one here is going to make, I did say, an ammonium salt. So if you're interested, what actually happens is this hydrogen ion here joins up with this neutral molecule and you end up making the ammonium ion, which is unusual, and that it's a positive complex ion in our data book. And of course, they're left over with Cl-, minus, so you end up making ammonium chloride. So there's four examples, guys, of... Um, four examples of our neutralisation reactions. The bell is about to go on here in Melbourne, so I may call a halt this video at that. I, I would like to do another video containing uh, neutralize, uh, sorry, not neutralization, containing spectator ions, though, and how to produce salt. I think that might be our final video, as far as this goes. Thank you for listening. That Hopefully that's been of some use to you for acids and bases. Bye-bye.